Hi, so today we're going to be going over kind of the basics of cucumber and what it is, what it's used for, and uh, then we're going to dive a little bit deeper into um, some of the coating that can go into it. So uh, a little bit of overview of what our topics are for today. Uh, we'll be talking about what, it, what are BDD and ATDD, uh, what is gherkin, what is cucumber, and what is the step definition. So starting out, <clears throat> what is what are BDD and ATDD? Uh, you probably hear these acronyms all the time, um, and you know, basically what they stand for is BDD is behavior driven development, ATDD is acceptance test driven development. You know, once you get into looking at what the difference are between these, they really end up being very similar. Uh, BDD. Uh, it describes overall behaviors of a system. So it's it, you describe how the system behaves, what it does, what you're able to do, the, the functionality behind it. You describe that and uh, using that description, you actually develop based off that description. So you're developing off of the behavior. Um, the, on the other side, acceptance test-driven development um, is kind of kind of goes under behavior driven development because acceptance test driven development basically uh, what you do is you have to know what tests have to pass in order for development to be called done so you create what are called acceptance tests and these are tests that will describe the system behavior and the system functionality and these are tests that have to work in order for the system to be accepted and um, to be determined to be finished. So, <clears throat> as it says here, it defines test requirements which act as requirements for the system. Um, it's acceptance tests are primarily development focused, um, so they will focus a lot more on individual pieces of the the app or the you know the website or whatever system you're building. They'll focus a lot more granularly than behavior driven development. For example because you have to write those individual tests that have to function correctly so you have to go into quite a bit more detail whenever you're doing acceptance test driven development um, and you know cucumber is kind of what falls in between um, cucumber uses a language called gherkin and gherkin is simply a um, a plain language way of describing a test case um, gherkin you can write it in you know any language that you want, um, but it's it's a language that Cucumber uses to define its test cases. It's non-technical, human readable, and helps to enforce firm, unambiguous requirements. Um, it uses a standard format, has many different uh, tools and things that you can do with it, but uh, essentially Gherkin is just a, you know, if you're using English uh, for your language, it's a plain English way of defining your test case. So <clears throat> with that said, uh, the one of the first key things to know about Gherkin is you have certain keywords that are available for describing your test. Um, these keywords are given, and, when, then. There's also a but. But isn't used very often, so I didn't include that. Um, if you want to use but, it's basically, um, it's a contradiction, so you'll um, with given, um, given is always a precondition for the test. So given precondition. Um, when is an action. So, you know, I click a button as an action. And then is a result. So you have given, when, then as your primary keywords that we're using. And then and is used as a connector. So if you see here, we have given as a precondition. And it's followed immediately by an and. Um, so this and takes the key, the property of the keyword above it, which is given. So this and becomes a precondition. Same way with this then. Then or this when is an action, and the ands below it are also uh, inherently actions because they're following the when. You can have multiple then and whens in it, but you shouldn't have a when when. So you shouldn't have a when followed immediately by a when or a when and and when. Uh, you should always, if you have to, you know, do another action after a then, you would then follow with a when. So you can have given, when, then, 
when, then, but you shouldn't ever have, you know, a uh, multiple wins um, in, in, in a line. Um, the, with this standard format, um, each test should always end with a then because that's the thing that you're asserting on. Then is your result and then is what you're trying to actually detest for. Um, the given is usually the setup of the test. The when is the action to get to those results. Uh, moving on a little bit, we have, um, you know, we've talked a little bit about Gherkin, um, but, you know, Gherkin is just this plain English way of uh, writing these test cases. How does this work with Cucumber? Well, first I'll give you a little bit of background on what Cucumber is. Cucumber is a open source tool uh, framework for test automation. It's... Uh, it's it's used for writing test cases uh, using the Gherkin uh, format. With the Gherkin format, what it essentially does is it will match your given, when, then, or and statements, and it will use regular expressions to then connect that to a piece of script code in order to execute the actual um, underlying test. So you can't just you know, write the plain English and expect a, a test to magically come out of nowhere. There's actual development that has to be done on this side. So generally, um, you define your test with Gherkin, but then you have to hook them up to actual you know, code to do that. So if you write something that says, given I click on button A on page B, you actually have to write the code that clicks on button A on page B. Um, Cucumber, uh, it's... It has, uh, like I was saying, the cucumber step is what wraps that automation code. The given when then uh, is matched to a cu what's called a cucumber step, and that is what essentially does your testing for you. Um, cucumber has been implemented in, in numerous different languages. Um, pretty much any language you, you, you know, any, or not any, most languages that you'll want to use have a, a cucumber implementation. Um, Ruby was the, the, what Cucumber was originally developed for. It's what I've been doing for you know, the, the past many years is working with Ruby. Um, I've also done some with JRuby, Java, and JavaScript. Um, but there's other languages that you could work with as well. Now, um, going on a little bit further is the organization of these tests. Um, the tests within Cucumber uh, you write the test within a, a file. It's a plain text file, but it has a dot feature extension. And this is what we call a feature file. A feature file will contain multiple scenarios. And each one of these scenarios will, be, uh, co will contain multiple steps. Now, it's important to note that if you have multiple features, each feature needs to be able to execute independently as if it was the only one. If you have multiple scenarios within a single feature, those also have to be able to execute without any input on any of the other scenarios. So uh, each scenario, you need to be able to make sure that each scenario you're able to execute um, by itself without any you know, input from any other scenarios. They have to be independent. And to some extent, the steps need to be independent as well. So this is an example of what a feature file might look like. We have the, the feature here, and uh, this, is the, this is a keyword. So you have to start with this keyword feature, keyword followed by a colon, and then the description. This should be a fairly detailed description of the feature that you're defining. So uh, one example of a feature would be account creation, or sign in, or uh, maybe uh, registration or some kind of uh, validation on a particular password. Uh, payments on a bank website could be considered a feature. Um, so a feature, uh, this keyword only exists once per file because it's the highest level, but it will have multiple scenarios generally. And uh, the, the scenarios, again, is a scenario keyword. So it's a scenario followed by a colon and then a description. This description should be uh, give plenty of detail on what the actual test is doing and kind of what the output is. Underneath the scenario, we actually have the steps to execute the tests. 
so in this one we are uh, we have the given I'm on the site homepage which is the precondition and then we're doing these actions so these six lines so these six next line items are the actions that we're performing we're clicking on the sign in link on the home page we're clicking on the register link on the sign in page we're entering all of these details and then we're expecting the missing name error on the create account page to be visible now on this next one you'll see it's very similar but uh, it's, we're not on the second example we're not actually um, filling in all the fields we're not filling in uh, the email field for example we're filling in everything else and this is just a simple example like if you were testing the create account validation on like the Amazon uh, create account page this is what this was taken from so <clears throat> again uh, basic structure is we have one feature which encompasses many scenarios and each scenario encompasses many steps moving on a little bit further is uh, you know we have uh, this is an, a real-world example we have the precondition as being given I'm on the home page um, what this would do is it would connect to code in the back that would essentially open up uh, a web browser of some kind and go to what you've defined as the home page for your environment the next one is the action given when I log in as gherkin test and this would probably do multiple things it would probably you know click on the login link enter a uh, predetermined username a predetermined password and then click on the sign in uh, button so this can do multiple things and many times it should do multiple things but you'll notice you know given that it does for uh, you know three or four things it's still included all in the concept of logging in as this type of user um, and then the next action we have which is connected to the win above so it's an action uh, when I navigate to the my account page so <clears throat> most times when you're developing a test uh, framework you'll want to especially if it's a, a web UI you'll want to have a fairly robust and extensible framework uh, so this is an example that I've used many times in the past uh, where I'll hook into our navigation framework and you know that way I can simply say what page I want to navigate to and it's always the same um, the next one again is a precondition I'm clicking on an element on a certain page and then the last one is I should be on my on the my list page so this is an assertion this would probably uh, look at the page and uh, it would locate certain elements that it would know hey I know these only exist on the my list page so I must be on the my list page uh, moving on a little bit further we have another thing that is underneath a uh, feature and that's called a scenario outline a scenario outline is a very powerful tool for when you're executing uh, many tests that are very similar and what a scenario outline will do is it will basically run in a loop and it'll act as a unique scenario for each line in its what's called an examples table and this is what is an examples table so uh, again this this uh, bottom example here we have feature which is our keyword and then instead of scenario keyword we have a scenario outline keyword with a description and then underneath af after the uh, after this whole thing we have uh, the examples table now the examples table again also look it's a keyword because it's followed by a colon if you wanted to you could put a description here um, I've never found descriptions for an example table all that useful so I haven't put it there um, but you'll see here we have this header which is called error which is up here anything that is in the example table has to have a header and that header has to be located in your step now you'll see here this error matches this error but you also notice it has these two uh, angle brackets the greater than less than sign and that means hey step look here in the example table and find my rows so basically what this will do is the first time it runs it will run and use the first row from the example table in place of this 
So it'll basically paste this into this. So what you get is you'll take this first element here and then it'll essentially be the same thing as this example up here up above. It'll just take that and plop it in the place of the placeholder header text. And the same thing for the second one, it'll loop again after it gets to the last scenario and whenever it loops the second time, it'll plop it in there. So um, you might wonder uh, why there's no given when then on this. It's simply, I removed those and truncated this as a, to simplify it a little bit. So ignore that there's no given or when, and there's just an and and then. I've just truncated the stuff from there. But what to get out of this is that your headers have to be in your step, and they have to, um, they have to have the angle brackets surrounding them. So if they have both of those, whenever it runs, it'll execute. This bottom one will execute the same as these top two, but in a very concise manner. So this is nice because essentially you could create, you know, a, you could take 10 scenarios and all combine them into a scenario outline if you do it correctly, uh, if they're similar enough. So um, this is another example of what not to do kind of. So this is where we have uh, two headers here. We have um, error, whoops, sorry. We have error, which is here. And um, we have the user data, which is here. You'll notice user data never changes. It's always user one. So if the data never changes in the data table, there's no reason to do it. Just don't do it. Put it directly in the step above. If the data does change like error, go ahead and do it because it'll execute uniquely for each scenario. Um, the data should always be different in these uh, examples. Uh, so for example, if I had user one and then user two and then user one, those are fine because those would be different combinations of data. But since all of these are always user one, I can just put it directly in the, in the top step definition. So <clears throat> this is the exact same thing as having a uh, column of all user one here. Anything that you put in this data table, you can just plop directly in the step definition as well. Um, some basic standards to go by is that whenever uh, we generally use parameters, uh, we wrap it in quotes. This helps whoever's reading it to know, hey, this is a parameter. And it helps whoever's developing it to create uh, easier reg regular expressions and um, to create more modular step definitions. Um, this is a, an example where we actually have different combinations of errors and email, uh, errors and fields in a scenario outline. So you see here we have the field here and the error here, and these are all different combinations. So this is a a better example of how you would use um, an ex a scenario outline. So this is a full scenario outline with given, when, then, and we have multiple uh, fields. Two columns, um, very important for readability. You always wanna make sure these pipes here are lined up and you wanna use spaces within these tables. Because if you use tabs, they will um, not align in all different text editors. Spaces um, will, will consistently be the correct space um, no matter what text editor you open it up in. Um, so don't use tabs whenever you're formatting the table. Go ahead and use spaces, please. Uh, and there should always be a space before the element, space after, at least one space after, and it should always go out for as far as your longest um, value. Uh, so we talked a little bit about how, what scenario outlines are. Uh, we have one, uh, this is, we've talked about, uh, scenario outlines. We've talked about step table. Um, step tables are, uh, the next topic that we're going to talk about. Sorry. Uh, step tables are another way you can use that same table, but step tables, uh, or data tables as they're also called are, um, data that is used all at once within a scenario. So within a scenario, you can have a data table, but that data table is basically used as a parameter within the step. 
it's not looped it's all used at once so this is an example of a scenario outline with a step table so in this we the first execution would be um, sorry the first execution of this would use the <clears throat> the the first row in the examples table the second row would use second third row third fourth row fourth but it would always use this whole table each time it ran. So, for example, the first time it would run, it would say, um, it would insert cucumber book for the search criteria, but it would use the entire data table in that step. So, during the first loop, it would do just like you see here. It would plop in Cucumber Book for this and verify that uh, all the results had that information. Um, again, the first row in the table is a header generally, uh, and the data below is all used at once. <clears throat> the next topic that we're going to talk about are backgrounds. Backgrounds are another... Um, convenient way to make your test a little bit shorter, a little bit more readable, and a little bit more maintainable. So a background is generally used when all of your scenarios have the exact same first step or first, you know, couple or a few steps. So <clears throat> in this example, we have example one, two, and three. Each one of these has the same first step. Not all of them have the same second step, but all of them have the same first step. Now, it's important to note, if all of your scenarios don't have the first same step, you cannot use a background. What a background essentially does is it, it executes first before all of your scenarios. So what I can do is since, it had this, since this feature, all the scenarios in this feature have the, first, the same first step, what I will do is take those and I'll put them in a background. And a background, again, is another unique keyword with a description, and a background actually has steps, kind of like a scenario. And what this will do is this will execute the same as this, but I only have to have that uh, given statement once. So if I have to edit it, I only have to edit it one place instead of editing it in three places here. So in this, um, you know, essentially it'll execute the background and then it'll continue to execute the scenario. For the next scenario, it'll execute the background and then execute the scenario. So backgrounds are essentially uh, kind of a, uh, if you're doing JUnit, it would be the setup um, of the test, basically. And <clears throat> the next part uh, we're going to talk about is you know, we have all these plain English things, but you might be wondering, okay, how does this actually connect to my scripting code? So whenever you're writing um, these steps, the given, when, thens, an uh, important thing to note is when you're writing the step definition, first off, um, the, for the step definition, the when, the given, when, and, then, don't matter for pattern matching. I could have this as given when then, you know, it, it would match any of these. So whenever you're writing your step definition, know that given when then are basically ignored as far as the code goes. Because as you can see here, the regular expression starts here after the given when then, and it ends here at the end of the line. So this top one is an example of our step and this bottom one is an example of a step definition. So we have this slash caret, and this is, denotes the beginning of the regular expression. This dollar sign slash indicates the end of the expression. Now this is written in Ruby, so your format will vary based on which language you're using. Uh, in all of my examples, I'll be using Ruby primarily. So <clears throat> in this, what we're essentially doing is we're matching I click on the quote and then the parentheses here say this is a parameter. And we're and the dot star says match anything. Uh, or it says match zero or more characters. So what this is essentially doing is it's saying, hey, anything inside of this quotes 
I'm using that as a parameter. And then it'll go on, on the, again, anything inside of these quotes, make a parameter page. So this is our first parameter element, as we've named it here. This is our second parameter page, as we've named it here. And then we can use those elements or those, uh, those parameters within our code. So we have page loader dot load, and we're passing it the page element, and then we're calling dot element, and we're passing the element name, and then dot click. So this is a, a very simple, you know, common uh, page loader or page object model way of, you know, finding an element and clicking on it. And if you make something as modular as this, um, you basically can replace anything in those quotes with anything you want. You could have this uh, work if you had, you know, when I click on sign in on the sign in page, that would essentially execute the same line of code because this should has to only be matched once. This step definition, you can't have multiple things defined that match. So every time you execute something that matches this, it has to execute the same code. Otherwise, you'll get an, un, uh, an unambiguous match. Uh, so your step definition has to only uh, match one thing. You can't have step definitions matching multiple things. So that's the end of this uh, video. If you want to, go ahead and post comments or questions in the comments below. Um, I'll be doing a couple more uh, videos about Cucumber, WebDriver automation, page objects, um, in the, in the coming future. So please feel free to ask questions uh, in, in the comments below. Thank you for your time and have a nice day.